get an ex back when there's a third party? Is that even possible? You better believe it is. Actually, you have to believe it is for it to work for you to embody what you need to embody with the mindset manifesting and the mechanics of men, you can have an ex back with a third party. And to do that, I want you to think of Bob, not a man named Bob, Bob as an acronym. You must believe, you must be optimistic, and you must behave your way to the results you desire. In this episode with Kelly, I go over the changes she needs to embrace how she needs to believe in the possibility, how she must change her mindset because her subconscious programming is driving the bus here and she needs to have Bob driving the bus. You will hear her story with Corey, which spans over eight years of love and a good relationship, but it went off course The good news is Kelly has the control to bring it back on course. In this episode, you will hear us discuss why I know that to be the case. And if you are going through a breakup and you want to get back with an ex, even with a third party, if there are any similarities in your situation to Kelly's, you have an equal chance of doing the same. So listen closely, learn and enjoy this episode with Kelly. I'm so thankful for your advice. I love how intelligent and eloquent you are and still have love. You've given me some great guidance and direction, and now it's up to me to execute it. I feel a lot better just working through it. I thank you so, so much. I feel like you already are instilling more confidence in me that this is possible. Sick of sacrificing or settling in your romantic life? Welcome to Make Him Wonder with Coach Paula Grooms where women struggling in real relationships ask the expert. Unscripted, unfiltered, understandable coaching conversations to help passionate women succeed in love. Hi there, and welcome to Make Him Wonder. I'm your host, Coach Paula, a dating and relationship coach for women, licensed social worker, and author of the book, Why Won't He Commit?, How a man decides to make you the one. I coach you to find a potential Mr. Right, get an ex back, or grow an existing relationship with a man you truly desire, and learn how to inspire his continued interest for the relationship of your dreams, so that you level up to the complete commitment you totally deserve. To that end, my guest today is 48-year-old Kelly, who is in an eight-year relationship with 41-year-old Corey. Corey broke up with Kelly a year ago due to him dating someone else, but he has remained in Kelly's life financially, physically, and emotionally. But Kelly wants Corey back. She states that she wants to remain on good terms due to the financial situation, but not give Corey quote-unquote too much because she wants him to miss her and think about returning. Kelly believes being on good terms and responding in positive, happy ways keeps their status uplifting and shows Corey that they can still have good times, joke around, and laugh together. Kelly comes on Make Him Wonder today to get my coaching on the best way to communicate with Corey for the chance of achieving her goal by having Corey back as she desires. Welcome, Kelly. Hi, Paula. Thank you so much for having me on. You're welcome. This is interesting to me because here I see in quotes that It says, Corey has remained in your life financially, physically, and emotionally. Could you outline those for us to the degree that you can so that I can make sense of what it is and know specifically what physically means, financially means, emotionally means? Sure. Um, So when Corey moved out, He um, remained in contact with me as we still are to fulfill the financial side of, you know, the agreement with when we were living together. So he told me that even though he's leaving and moving out on his own, that he did not want to just leave me to figure it out basically. He was going to continue assisting 
financially as he was while he was living here. So tell me, is that a home you bought together, rent? It is a home that I purchased alone. We were already together when I purchased it. And because we were not married, um, it was an agreement that it was a purchase that I was going to make on my own. But we moved in together. Once the home was built, we moved in together and, um, you know, discussed the what we would do each financially. Okay. So I have some questions around that. And we're going to go through each of these things, as I said. The first is, at what year of your being together did you make this purchase? We were together for three years. And why is it, given your ages, et cetera, that you did not marry? He, he never proposed, uh, but he did ask me over the years if I wanted to get married or was interested in ever remarrying um, as we each both had one marriage prior to, to meeting each other. And I never felt like I wanted to remarry again. Why not? It was not because of the relationship that he and I had. It was more or less of just, I, I never was interested. So I thought in remarrying, I thought that what we had was, you know, was good. And I always just replied to him, you know, we're fine right now. Let's just continue doing what we're doing and see where it goes. And when it was time for, you know, to be interested in possibly remarrying again, it was when our relationship was not at its best. And at that time, he became uninterested in remarrying again. I see. We still didn't get to the why, because when we get to our why, we really unpack beliefs and systems, and it sounds like you already have, but so that I understand from his perspective, I asked you, why didn't you want to marry? And if you can give me more on that, a la marriage seemed restrictive, I don't want the state involved in my financial life. I've seen too many divorces. I didn't want another divorce. I didn't know if I wanted to marry him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Can you tell me more about the why? Yeah. So when I met Corey, he had two young children at the time uh, that we met, which I thought would be no problem for me uh, at all due to I had already raised my one and only child and thought that, you know, no big deal. Starting over would not be an issue. Um, well, <laughs> I learned over time that it was not as what I thought, and although his children were wonderful and I absolutely grew to love them, it was because they were so young, I never thought that I wanted to commit to a marriage because I wasn't quite sure how it was going to continue to go with them being young. And I just wanted to make sure that, like you said, it wasn't going to end up in a divorce. So I, I just always wanted to keep things as they were. Um, they were three and five when we met. So it was quite an adjustment, although he did not have them full time because he shared custody with his ex-wife. It still was more than what I initially thought it was going to be starting all over again, basically, with young children. Got it. How long was he divorced when you met? We both were divorced for a year. How did you meet? Um, so we met through mutual friends. Like I said, we were both divorced at the time when we met for about a year. Um, and it was through mutual friends. So it didn't come through in what I got as an introduction for you that either of you were divorced or had children. You have a child as well? I do, yes. My ex-husband and I have one child together only. And when um, I met Corey, uh, my child had already left for college. I see, got it. So you married young when you first married. Yes, and I had her um, when I was 20. I see. Okay. I'm glad to hear 
that there was not a child, you know, young child on your end of things, given this relationship. When did Corey move in with you? Corey moved in with me um, about a, let's see, it was a year. It was a maybe a little over a year that we were dating when we decided that we were going to move in together. And what was the discussion then around your perhaps forever time together, even though you were not marrying? Did he want to marry? Yes, he spoke about marriage many, many times through our relationship. He absolutely wanted to get married again. Mm -hmm. All right. I understand that part now. Let's go to the emotionally part of your introduction here, that he's remained in your life emotionally. Tell me specifically what that looks like, feels like, and is happening right now. After he moved out, we did not have instant contact with each other. It did take about a couple weeks. Um, but after a couple weeks, he reached out just to check on me, ask basic questions. How are you? How are things going? And at that time, he, you know, just continued to stay. We, kept, we have remained in touch with each other over the entire course of him being moved, you know, away. If I need anything, um, not necessarily that I would even have to ask him, but upon him checking on me, if there's something that I mentioned, he is right there to offer assistance, whether it be financially or to help me out in any way. Um, he's, al he's always let me know that no matter where we are in a relationship or not, his words specifically were, I'm never too far away um, from helping you. And over the course of the year that he's been gone, he really has never uh, astrayed from those words. Um, he's always there if I need him, whether, like I said, I ask him or not, even while being in another relationship. I understand. And the other relationship, how did that come about? And where is he now? Living with her? He is not living with her. I found out about his relationship with her again about a couple weeks after he moved out. Not because he told me, but because I found out. Um, they used to work together. He used to be her boss years ago. He is no longer her boss, but they do remain in the same company. So that is, is where they met many years ago. Um, I, I've known her. She knew about us. I've had several interactions with her going to his work, saying hi, greeting. So uh, when I found out about them, I was surprised. But then again, I really wasn't. So he moved out a year ago. You found out two weeks after he moved out about her. Were there any discussions about that at the time? Immediately, yes. And the reason, the, the reason or how I found out was because she actually lived in the same subdivision that I do, and so does he. We all live about five minutes from one another. Uh, just different parts of the subdivision. And one evening I was leaving my home and I saw his truck in her driveway and instantly contacted him. And um, that, that's how basically I let him know that, that I knew that he was with her. I'm so sorry, Kelly. That's very difficult. Thank you. It's actually, it's, it's, been probably the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with in my life, honestly. Yeah, Sad yes. to say, but I, I do believe it's true. I understand. Yeah. How was it that when he moved out, he stayed in such proximity? He found a home that just so happened to be um, for rent in our subdivision and decided to to instantly, you know, to move in. So he rents there or did he buy it? No, he is renting. He said that due to his job um, and not knowing where he's going to be permanently located or transferred to uh, one day that he does not want to, to buy at this time. Okay, now let's get to the physically. What do you mean by that and him staying in your life in that way? For the first six months of us being broken up and him being moved away, 
we basically only stayed in contact, like I said before, him checking on me, you know, making sure if I needed any, asking if I needed anything. Uh, it, it ended up becoming physical again after about six months, maybe a little bit longer of him, you know, moving out. And that was just uh, maybe conversations going a little bit longer than they normally would have, such as the, hey, how are you? You know, flirting a little bit, um, just kind of talking like we normally would with familiar conversation. And then um, uh, the very first time it was him inviting me over to his to have dinner with him. Meanwhile, yes, always still being in this relationship with her. Um, I don't think that they're fully committed. I, I don't believe that they are seeing anyone else, but I do believe it's more of a dating type of situation with them. I truly don't know, but I feel like from the beginning, I'm, you know, the way that I have found things out and just by talking to him, it doesn't appear as if obviously that he's completely in love with her and just wants to be with her. Again, that's just from my perception of it. So for six months, you have been in a physical relationship again? Not all the time. No, there have been only three instances. Okay. This first incident, did he make the overture or did you? He did. And what was your reaction? I've always wanted to be back with him. So at first, I just told myself, I'm going to go there for dinner for the invite because let's see where this is going. You know, is this going in a direction of let's get back together? Let's see, you know, so I was going over there thinking, let's try to have fun again together. Let's Let's see if we can still be fun and playful and maybe bring back those memories that we had to see if we still had that together rather than it always just be the interaction of which, which I've always been communicating to him how hurtful it is that I feel like he chose someone else over me, yet he still remains in contact with me. Basically, you want to do everything for me. You're willing to help me financially. You're here physically, emotionally, mentally, all, all, all aspects. But why aren't you coming back? You're still choosing to be with someone else. So rather it always be that, you know, me speaking to him about, I thought each interaction that we have physically Let's try to be more lighthearted so I can show him a different way that I can still be fun and playful and not always so serious and sad and heartbroken. And I need to have my question answered of what did you say to him at that time when he made overtures? Nothing really. I accepted his invite and went over there and after eating dinner and watching TV and laughing and being very playful, it just went, uh, it, it just turned physical and there was nothing that I said after I um, did spend the night and the next day when I went home is when I think it hit me for the first time that where, you know, with the questions, where is this going? What What is this going to end up being? And what did that mean? Um, over time and many conversations that he did not want to have, I basically, you know, well, he actually did start to say, or he did say, you know, I think that we, that I, I do want us back together. I always see us together in the end. I just feel like we both still have things to work on. And if we got back together now, it would not work out. So over the course of the last six months, I just basically tried to start working on, on myself, um, just not doing the things that I know didn't previously work for us, you know, different behaviors that I had towards him. And um only to find out or to realize, you know, he's still not leaving her. Again, they have not pursued anything more such as moving in together. I do know that his family still do not know her. I don't know if they know about her, but they have not met her. His children have. He says that he does not bring his children around her often. His time with them is his time. 
again, this is just what he's telling me. He never wants to speak about them, ever. He, everything I ask, he's very short. He stops the conversation. He never wants to talk about their relationship. Yet Bill has shown me that there's no commitment again with us. And I feel like it's because partly of the behavior that I am still portraying of still feeling very sad and heartbroken and constantly wanting to talk about them, trying to figure out just how serious they are, basically, as to opposed to, well, you know, if you say that you're all, you're not that serious, yet you're still reaching out to me, we still have something together, you still see us together, what is it about you and her that you stay? Um, you know, I just, I feel... Like my self-esteem, my confidence, everything is diminished because I feel, quote unquote, that he chose her over me. And so I'm not sure. I just, I don't feel like he feels safe enough to return back to the relationship because of, you know, how I'm acting still. But the reason for my actions is because I'm very hurt by him being in this new relationship that he's in. Okay, and I'm going to tell you that you can have him back, Kelly, fully, completely, without him having anything more to do with her than be nice to her and a colleague. Okay, feel like that's partly true. Um, and on the other side, I feel like um, knowing her, she is, she makes his life easy. She is not demanding. I think she accepts what he is willing to give her, which is, you know, hey, we're going to be together, but I'm going to live here. You're going to live there. He gets to come and go as he pleases with her. I don't feel like she asks a lot of questions. She's not a demanding person of his time or his, you know, energy. I feel like he's so comfortable right now that I fear that he will not leave her because although he may not have the intent or, you know, the love that he and I had, I feel and fear that she is enough to, you know, for him to, to stay with her because of the ease and comfort that she provides with what he's wanting at this time in his life. I see. And basically. He's almost told me that in so many words. Not the part that he's going to remain with her, but as I said, he's answered very few questions that I've asked about them. However, one of them that he did ask, I asked, what is it about her? And he said, well, I will let you know, my life is very easy right now. And that's how I want it to stay. He kept it very short and simple. So what I find interesting about your answer to me when I said, you can have this back. You're on with me now. You know what I do. You obviously understand consciously, intellectually, a lot about what I do or you wouldn't be here. And you didn't ask me how or really or anything related to that. You kind of went to her as the issue. And I have to tell you, it is not at all the issue. Yeah. I immediately went to her because basically I don't want to compare myself and I do not compare myself in any way to her except for the part that, yes, I do feel like I can have him back. My going to her, referencing her, is because I feel like she, because of the, um, the ease that she provides in the relationship that he's wanting right now, as opposed to what he and I went through, you know, off and on through the course of the years of us being together. So I don't know if he's ever going to want to walk away from someone who doesn't question him, isn't um, insecure, um, isn't demanding or, you know, jealous. And again, those are not things that I know because I'm around them or that I see it. It's just because a little bit knowing her previously and then how he's basically portrayed their relationship to me. Um, she's part of what keeps his life easy. Again, he can come and go. He, she's not demanding. He just, he does what he wants. And I don't say that in a, a bad way, but she, um, she's the easy one. And I feel like I'm at this point not. 
so interesting, and I hope that listeners pick up on it. You actually went right back to what I said you did instead of saying how. You went to her yet again. You were saying one thing, but feeling another and justifying it. Yeah, that's exactly right. I I do want to know how. I want to ask how, and I'm sure we will figure out the how. Um, I think my fear overrides my my belief. You're exactly right when you said I'm saying one thing and believing another. It it is absolutely true. I I want to know how. I want to believe, and, and, and some part of me, parts of me do believe that because we've never lost contact, because he is always so willing to be here and to do for me, that it is very evident that we can and will be together again. Um, I, I do just fear that, and I use the word fear because I do want us back together so badly, um, but I just wonder from a man's perspective, is is it is love enough to walk back, to come back, or at some point does it remain, you know, well, my life is exactly how I want it, but, well, I shouldn't say exactly. My, my life is what I want, I have everything that I want, and then she's enough is it is it just you know does love is is love enough to make him come back we don't just have love but or is it that the ease that she provides in his life going to be enough for him to stay you know long term or or is what we had enough for him to come back again okay so we move the needle a little bit that's good i'm going to answer your question outright Is love enough? An unequivocal no, it is not. And you are going to have to do many things that are going to allow you to open up and understand what's at play here and make changes according to that understanding. You can have this if you make significant changes. Your focus is on the wrong things and misguided due to your emotions and lack of understanding. Once you understand, shift your focus and handle your emotions, you can have him back quickly. It is going to take work, but if you do it, I know you can have it from all that I'm hearing. And before we take a break, I'm going to tell you one thing that's a very important distinction. You have equated him staying in your life and the things he has said to you, like, I'm here for you, whatever you need, that kind of stuff, with romantic love. And it's not quite right. It's part of the familial love that came about during your eight years together and his guilt In other words, if he's at all a normal guy, meaning he's not sociopathic or a raving narcissist, he felt bad about what he did. He couldn't control it, but because the relationship you had was not set up to sustain itself, this occurred. And given that he was only divorced for a year, that played into it a bit. But if you do not focus solely on everything in this situation being in your control, and it is, you are going to keep getting what you've gotten. So when we come back, I am going to tell you how you do it, and we will go through it and get all your questions answered. We'll do that in a moment. I trust you're enjoying Make Him Wonder, and that you're getting a lot of helpful information for the life of love you desire and deserve. So if you're not part of the 80-20 Wonder Club yet, you need to be, because now Make Him Wonder is exclusive, a members-only club to listen to every episode, past, present, and future, in full, all ad-free. The 80-20 Wonder Club is a Make Him Wonder membership that gives you all of seasons one, two, and three in a categorized list by age and relationship status, and a multimedia library of my content, including my book, relationship evals, and my Mechanics of Men Mindset Manual, a weekly action step 
you can focus on to attract and keep the man of your dreams and have him committing to you completely in the coming months. Make this the moment you start living as an 80-20 Wonder Woman because love, like life, is best lived in 80-20. When you do 80% of what works with men, the 20% you don't won't much matter. Join the 80-20 Wonder Club by going to the 8020wonder.club. Don't miss out. Go now to the 8020wonder.club. You and your man will be glad you did. So Kelly, what were you thinking about during the break? Are you feeling excited, fearful? What's the emotion? It makes me very excited and hopeful, uh, you know, to, to know that what I'm thinking, which is, again, partly that I, that we absolutely still have enough or can have enough to, to get back together. It does excite me and, 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 and I, I remain hopeful. And then on the other hand, again, it's the how, okay, now that we've established this and, and my thoughts are kind of what you're agreeing with or thinking as well, you know, let's get to the how. And some of it does seem obvious. And then some of it, obviously, um, I'm like, well, you know, this can't be enough. I don't want to have the I'm letting him keep me in the basic friend zone and get, you know, the physical side. But, you know, if there's no change, there's no change is how I feel. And I felt like, well, you know, go hang out with him. Not a lot, not often, but enough to, to get that fun, playful, you know, kind of just to reset us reset us and let's start again type of situation between us again but then every time well the three times that I've that, that has happened and I've come home the next day it puts me it starts me in the cycle all over again of okay wait what did you just do he's not coming back to you he's never going to come back to you if you continue to do this but how can I show him change? Like by texting is, you know, texting is texting. I feel like in person is when we can actually have the interaction. And no, it does not always have to be physical in that way, sexually. But I don't know how to make the change without being with him now and then so he can see, you know, yeah, we, we do still have something together rather than just, him texting me, hey, how are you? Oh, I'm doing fine, you know, and showing that, you know, you're hurting me. Every time I come over there, I'm hurt because I leave the next day and, you know, um, you're still with her. You spend several nights a week with her, yet you're with me. And it just, it's always a vicious, It no matter how good the interaction is, when we see each other the next day, I always go back to you know I yes I did this and it was my decision I'm an adult I can say yes or no but look what you're still doing to me when it's not what he's doing to me I get it it's what I'm doing and allowing for myself but I have a reason why I want to yet it always sends me back to square one with now I'm hurt now I'm asking a hundred questions again now I'm showing my insecurity which is completely unattractive and then guess what happens we stop talking we stopped talking for a week or two, and then he will, because I never reach out to him first, never. He always will reach out again. Hey, how are you? Everything okay? You know, checking in. And it does not always end to him inviting me over. We'll talk for a day or two. He goes silent. And, you know, it, it's just, it's this cycle that I feel like, how do I get out of so it can move to the next step? Great. You've hit on everything there. Now you have to do it. I have the answer for you. If you do it, I can tell you that the possibility of you having him back with everything, all of him, is so high. I can guarantee you one thing, that if you don't do it this way, you will have more of what you have and it will erode even more and you will push him away. Yeah, which is my absolute fear, is, is my actions pushing him away further. They are. They are doing nothing to help you. But your programming, to a great degree, is compelling you to continue doing what you've done. Because change is very, very hard. It takes motivation, intention, education, follow through. This can give you everything you want a completely 
committed relationship if you do this approach. You hit on a word there, reset things. It's everything. If you don't do it this way, like I said, I can guarantee you will have what you have now or worse. If you change and if you do it with this lure him back approach, the degree that you can have it is so high, so high. You've heard me on the podcast probably talk with women about this. So I want to assess your level of knowledge about it, not what you've been doing, but your knowledge. What do you think I'm going to say needs to be done for the chance? I have a few different answers. I don't know which is, is going to be accurate and maybe more than one, but I don't know if the no contact is going to be one of them. Um, I don't know if that's, again, the right approach being in the situation that we're in so, you know, so far into it, um, or if maybe positive contact would be the better option. Um, Definitely the physical side has got to stop, um, definitely. And me comparing or focusing on her, which I am absolutely admitting that I do, not comparing to try to be like her, but just focusing so much on, wow, every time I speak about my insecurities, why this, why that, it's only almost kind of making it like, okay, well, do you see why I'm with her? She doesn't do any of that. So in a way it's comparing, but not, like I said, I don't know. I know a few things that I I need to do with not knowing how to approach it because it always comes back to me feeling less than because he did for now choose someone over me and has remained with her so it always leads me back to expressing my insecurities with to him, and um, it's almost like I want him to know, look what look what you're doing. You're doing so much for me, but you're hurting me because you're with her still, and and, and that's the absolute wrong approach. He already knows what he's doing. The, the guilt is there. I've asked him, do you still help me because you're guilty, and he feel guilty, and he said a little bit, yes but I also do it because I told you that I would and I will honor my word to you and I'm never going to leave you to wonder how are you going to do it? What are you going to do next? He says, and I said, well, how long is this going to last? And he said, "Um, I have no intentions of ever making it stop until you tell me that, that you no longer need the help or just to tell me, you know, to stop. So I I have a few different reasons thinking what needs to happen or what you're going to tell me. What are your questions to me? Um, I think my questions basically are um, how, you know, the how do I navigate getting focused back on myself to regain my confidence and my self-esteem without focusing so much on what, what another woman is providing him to keep him with her as opposed to him wanting to come back to what we had. Uh, I just, I don't, I, I think I've lost myself in, in all of focusing on the wrong thing, such as their relationship, as opposed to focusing on what I need to do to get him reattracted and, you know, possibly potentially coming back to what we had. I love what you just said. You hit on the main points. It is you and it is what you need to do to get him reattracted, reset this, and only then can you restart it. And if you do those three re's, you will have this. Okay. I'm ready. Definitely ready for, for change. I love that because I assume it's that you've had enough pain. I have gone through the worst emotional pain, yes, that I've taken previously that I've ever been through with this type of, you know, situation, obviously. Um, My biggest struggle is if you don't want us, why are you still talking to me, reaching out, helping, doing so much? Because even the financial aspect, he could literally fulfill his financial part and still never speak to me. We don't have to remain doing anything. 
if you care so much, then why aren't we back together? But if you want her and you fully want her or you don't want us, then, you know, the confusion is, is, is so high there. Why, why? Why are you still doing for me what, you, what you're doing if you don't want me? Either you want it or you don't. Walk away so I can fully move on. He's never asked me to hold on. He's never asked me to wait. I just feel like because he's still in my life, somewhat that I am stuck. I don't know how to, to move forward or to, to move in a different direction at all. Okay, Kelly, I have to stop you because your talking about it is circular and you have this time with me. So you want, I assume, to hear how you do it, correct? Correct. But I can imagine over this year, it is so consuming. There has been so much pain. And there are likely women in your life who you talk about this constantly or maybe even incessantly. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. It is basically consumed, consumed me. That's absolutely correct. Yes. I have the fix. And like I said, if you would consider this like a gamble, I can give you at least an 80% chance that if you do it this way, you can have him back fully, completely, completely committed. And the flip side is if you don't do it this way, I can give you 100% that you will not have that. Okay. Here's the rub. If you thought that the last year has been difficult, this is going to be equally as challenging to you because it's going to challenge your fundamental beliefs that are hurting you, and it is going to require you to do things differently to get a different result. In other words, it's going to be one of the hardest things you will ever do, the most challenging, and typically when we challenge ourselves with anything, running a marathon, getting a degree, those things don't come easily. It takes work, it takes intention, it takes focus, commitment, all of it. This is no different. It's to the degree you want the result. I have the answer. It's your commitment to it. What happens for us as women is that we take all these factors into account that it means something. And it's typically our downfall. So I'm going to chunk it down for you to help you to understand why the approach I'm going to give you works. If I worked with men to get a woman back, just know this would never be the approach and it would never work. Once I reached out to you, I knew I was fully committed to, to try for anything for change. That's great to hear. So in order to understand this, we have to go back a little bit. You got together, he fell in love, and you did not understand that for you as a woman, you were completely committed, all in, everything wrapped up, without marriage. In other words, you didn't need marriage to be committed, correct? Correct. I thought at the time, yes, correct. Well, you still don't. Not only is he doing what he's doing, you're still committed. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I, I really am. Of course, because you're female. Men need marriage. Marriage was created for men to stay in line because men are fundamentally biologically meant to spread their seed. Back in the day, women didn't really have much of a chance to do that. And we fundamentally don't need the boundaries of it to be committed at all. The puppy principle in my book explains it. Are you familiar with it? I am. Yes, I am. Okay. So do you understand why he needed to adopt you as the pretty puppy you are to continue to be responsible to you in the way you're talking about? Yes, I, I do understand that um, very much so. Okay. And I'm saying this because it's fundamental to where we're going with this. And everything in you is going to push against it because it's going to be hard. But you said you're committed, you said you're ready, so I can give that to you of how you do it and answer all your questions that are going to arise out of your need to push back on the difficulty related to how you do it. The first thing you must do is what hopefully you've done right now, commit to it. 
and say to yourself, to the universe, no matter what, I am done with this pain. I know I can change it. I am going to change it. I am going to have this relationship exactly how I want it. Him back, us a completely committed couple together forever. When I say that, what's your pushback on that? I didn't actually think of pushback. It just actually made me smile. It made me smile because I feel like there's hope. And with being so ready, I, I, I feel very positive and have a, a, a pretty good outlook on, you know, this, this can happen. I, I believe this can happen. I know it can because of all you have told me about him and your relationship and the fact that he made overtures towards you and all that he has said to you. I know it like I know my name. If you do it in this difficult way. This is the work that I do with women. This works and there is more than hope here. So I am glad that you smiled when I said it and that you didn't have a lot of pushback. That means you are at the right place to do this using mindset, manifestation, and the mechanics of men and male psychology included in that is you working on your self-concept and your programming that's included in the mindset because there's a lot here in terms of that but when you focus there and do the steps i'm going to outline for you you can have this back likely in a matter of months that sounds incredible i'm i'm ready okay move forward and just get out of what has been keeping me stuck basically and in, in just a, a, a wheel you know that I, that I feel like I, I no longer know how to move out of. I love that you're right you have been on a wheel mm -hmm. and this is tantamount to stepping off of that wheel and creating this new beautiful merry-go-round for the two of you make no mistake it is you as the woman who is going to do that Otherwise, he will continue to run amok on both you and her and whatever other dalliances there may be, who knows, right. and thwart his chances for real fulfillment. Make no mistake, I am not saying he's a bad guy. He's not. What you have told me and him wanting to continue to help you and like you said he could have just walked out not continued to give you any money not said I'll be there for you and you probably know that some emergency comes up he's gonna be there is that true he, he not even a week ago an emergency did arise and he was the first person to to come and and help me I, my, my car broke down he immediately found out and showed up 45 minutes away and and got me home safely and my first response was i did not ask for you to come help me he says i know you didn't and you will not have to ask me he says my, my problem with this is why didn't you and i said because i'm trying to be independent and do things on my own and I am not your problem and he said and I've never called you that mm -hmm. so it's a pride thing too you know it's I'm trying to prove myself so much that basically I, I've lost myself I don't know where to begin ah I'm gonna tell you I love this Kelly I'm gonna give you exactly what to say to start this to set it up and this will set in motion all that needs to happen for him, he is going to be coming back to you and begging you to get back together. Okay. Okay? That sounds wonderful. I want you to be excited because you can be and you're going to need to create that excitement for yourself through the knowledge that you finally have the approach that has worked for so many other women and will work in this case if you kind of do it by the book so let's get to the first thing and what you need to do there's a little setup with it and then what you are going to do and say to him okay so you got to be all ears all right you can do this a number of ways you can start with 
Wondering how Kelly starts my lure him back approach to win back Corey's commitment? In the rest of this episode, I give Kelly the exact steps she needs to take so that Corey's love is re-sparked, reset, and the two can restart their relationship on the right path. And because I want you to get the results you desire with your current or ex Mr. Right, I invite you to check out the 8020 Wonder Club, an exclusive membership only club of the Make Him Wonder podcast, where you'll get 200 ad free episodes categorized by age and relationship status, plus all new episodes the moment they're formatted and ready to be aired. Unfiltered coaching conversations like this one with all my advice and principles to have you succeeding in your romantic life. But there is much more. The 8020 Wonder Club includes my Making Magic with Men Mindset Manual, a weekly video series of mindset and mechanics practices for you to do at your own pace. It alone is valued at over $500 and is all yours as a member. Join monthly and cancel at any time or save by committing to a 6 or 12 month membership. And not only will you save by committing to more, you'll receive a full coaching intensive experience where you'll be talking to me in a conversation like you just heard. You choose the date anytime during your 12 month membership and I'll be answering all your questions on getting what you desire and deserve in your love life. Check it out at the 8020wonder.club and join us as that is the only way you'll be able to hear what Kelly must do to have her rightful shot with Corey. Don't miss out on how to make your man wonder in the right way to have the divine right results you desire in your romantic life. Go now to T-H-E-8020 W-O-N-D-E-R dot C-L-U-B. That's the 8020wonder.club. You and your love will be glad you did.